I am what it says I am. I have who what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'll never, never, never doubt this word because it is the word of God. I've got ears to hear, hard to receive, so teach to me the word of God. And we say amen, amen. and amen. It is so great to see Tony sitting down front. Praise the Lord. Amen. He took a vacation and uh, was on the beach in Hawaii someplace or, or maybe at the VA hospital. They did surgery. It was very, very successful. And he has recovered supernaturally. And it's good to see you in church, my brother. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Get busy about eating. Carla's good cooking. Amen. Glory to God. I want to talk about the foundational truths related to healing. So turn with me to Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. I'm mindful of the time. I don't know how far we'll get through the message, but I will list these four foundational truths because I want us to have a moment that we can pray for you uh, anoint you, pray for you, speak God's healing over you. So you just begin to prepare your heart right now. If you would like God's healing in your body, if you would like to just stay under the umbrella of health and wellness, then uh, let's get you anointed today and stand in agreement together because that is God's will for your life. Amen. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He always preached kingdom. He was the king of the kingdom. That makes sense, doesn't it? And then he would demonstrate the kingdom, keep reading, and healing all kinds of sickness, all kinds of disease among the people. And then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The ministry of Christ was one of teaching, preaching the kingdom, and then he would demonstrate the kingdom by healing because sickness does not belong in the kingdom. Healing belongs in the kingdom. Devils do not belong in the kingdom, so he'd cast out devils and he would make disciples. So that is the fourfold ministry of Christ, teaching the kingdom, healing the sick, casting out devils, making disciples. And you read of that repeatedly over and over again. And this is what he instilled in the church when he sent out the 12, sent out the 70. When he give, gave a commission to the church upon his resurrection and ascension, giving us the great commission, it was all about go, preach, and heal the sick. And these are things that are still in operation today because the anointing is still in operation today. Now, the foundational truths are of healing, and I think we have a slide that shows them. If not, they, they are listed in our scripture list at the front uh, table out in the lobby. Ah, there we are. Here's number one, foundational truth of healing. It is God's will to heal. Everybody read that with me. Number one, it is God's will to heal. Here's number two. The Lord Jesus has done everything necessary to secure our healing. Nothing else needs to be done. Jesus has already done everything necessary to secure our healing. So let's read number two together. The Lord Jesus has done everything necessary to secure our healing. Here's number three. We have a legal right to healing as stated in our covenant with God. Our healing does not depend on God's whim, whether God is in a good mood or a bad mood. And let me just tell you, God is always in a good mood. And it is always His will to heal. But what I, the point I'm trying to make is, it doesn't depend on God's mood or your mood. It depends on the covenant. We have a legal right to healing, and if you have a legal right to it, you cannot be denied it. Amen. And number four, we receive according to our belief in the Word of God. 
If you don't believe it, you can't receive it. But if you do believe it, it's yours. Amen. Believe and receive. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believeth those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. In other words, believe and receive. You can receive whatever you believe. I said you can receive whatever you believe. And if you believe you are the healed of the Lord, if you believe the prior three foundational truths, that healing is yours. I said the healing is yours. It's already, it is already yours. It's not something God has to manufacture. It has been yours for 2,000 years since Jesus shed blood on the cross. For by his stripes you are healed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, do you believe those four foundational truths? With an amen, say, yes, I believe it. Amen. Uh, Now, in the body of Christ, throughout the world, in the body across many, many denominations, uh, these foundational truths are more of a suggestion than a truth. But I want you to uh, I want you to know this is Bible that we're talking about. And when people say that, well, number one, it is God's will to heal, well, some will say divine healing has passed away. But that cannot be the truth because the anointing has not passed away. Faith has not passed away. The Word of God has not passed away. The Great Commission has not passed away. No, it has not passed away. They say, well, it passed away when the apostles died. Well, the apostles did die. That is true. But God's ability did not die. The anointing did not die. Faith did not die. The Great Commission did not die. Do you, do you remember that when Jesus great gave his commission, he said, In my name, uh, these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they'll talk with other tongues or cast out devils. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. These signs shall follow them who believe. In my name, they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, the Great Commission hasn't passed away. People say it's passed away. No, no, no. Jesus wants his church to operate in the ministry just as Jesus operated in the ministry. He demonstrated that over and over and over again. Some will say, well, yes, I believe in healing, but it seems that other folks get healed. I don't get healed. Healing isn't for me, apparently. It's not God's will to heal me. I want you to know, if God will heal anybody, he'll heal you. Because God is no respecter of persons. But God is a respecter of faith. If you stand on the word and you stand in faith, that healing is yours. Some people will say, well, yes, God heals, but I'm going to get my healing when I get to heaven. And that is true. We're all going to be healthy and well and strong in heaven, good looking in heaven, a full head of hair in heaven. Yeah, that's going to happen. No wrinkles in heaven. Glory to God. Glorified bodies in heaven. Yes, amen. I believe all of that. But aren't we to pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, in earth. In earth as it is in heaven. In earth. Why wait to heaven when you can have heaven in earth? Don't wait on your healing. Well, I'll get my healing in heaven. Well, heaven's supposed to come to earth. Aren't you praying? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In fact, when Jesus sent out his disciples, he said, I want you to preach the kingdom, and then I want you to lay hands on the folk, and I want you to heal them. And this is what he said. He he said, as soon as you heal them, this is what you tell them. The kingdom of God has just touched your life. The kingdom of God has just touched your life. When you heal them, you tell them. That's kingdom business. Well, we're to pray, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. So if kingdom is healing and we pray kingdom come, healing is for now. 
Healing is yours. Someone say, healing is mine. I got the Holy Ghost, so I got the gift of healing. You got the Holy Ghost, so you got the gift of healing. Isn't that one of the gifts that, that Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12? Gifts of healings. Uh, Holy Spirit gives gifts to the church. One of them is the gifts of healings. Uh, say, I got the gift giver living on the inside. Many will interpret that to say, well, some's got the tongues gift, some's got the prophecy gift, some's got the word of knowledge gift, some's got the healing gifts. And, and there are folks that flow in, in different gifts in, in that way. But you've got the gift giver living on the inside of you. You don't have to wait to the guy who's got the gift of healings to show up at church for you to get your healing. Uh, you've got the healer living on the inside. Hey, listen, you can get whatever you have need of by faith. Amen. Bible says, if earthly fathers know how to give good gifts, how much will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Do you need a healing? Ask. You need prosperity? Ask. You need joy? Ask. Peace? Ask. Whatever it is that you need, ask. He'll give it in abundance. Abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So number one, it is God's will to heal. Have I convinced you of that? Yes. Mark 16 and 17, it says, These signs shall follow them believe. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Glory, glory to God. Amen. Now, Jesus has done everything necessary to secure our healing. He's redeemed us from the curse of the law. Don't have time to go into those scriptures, but I want you to know in Deuteronomy 28, it says the curse of the law, if you don't keep the law, sickness is one of the manifestations of that curse. Well, we're told in Galatians that Jesus has delivered us from the curse of the law. I'm not under the curse. You're not under the curse. We've been delivered from the curse of the law. If you don't keep the law, you're living under a curse. But we've been delivered from the law. We're under grace. Hallelujah. We have been delivered from sickness and disease because we're not under the curse anymore. Hallelujah. Why should we have to bear what Jesus has already borne? He has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. By his stripes we are healed. Everybody say that out loud. By his stripes, we are healed. We have a legal right to healing. It's stated in our covenant with God. The Bible that you hold in your hand is a legal document. It's not just an encouraging word. It's not just a letter of love. It is all those things, of course. But it is a legal document. It's called a covenant. A covenant means a legal agreement between two parties. Jesus said this is the blood of the new covenant. In Hebrews, we're told that we have a new and better covenant. Jesus is the mediator of that new and better covenant. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. And so we have a covenant to all of the promises of God that are in the Word of God. That's why the promises are called yea and amen in Christ Jesus. The promises of God are all yes in Jesus. We can't be denied them. We have legal right to them. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? Amen. So if you went before a judge and someone brought an accusation before the judge, what would you take? You would take the contract that you have between you and this other accuser and you would lay it before the judge and the judge would read that contract and the judge would decide in your favor because the judge would say, well, according to your rights in this contract, you can do X, Y, and Z. So, Mr. Accuser, I throw this case out. Well, the devil is going to accuse you and tell you that you're supposed to be sick, you're supposed to be weak, you're supposed to be dying, but you take your agreement before the Lord and you lay it before God and say, hey, my accuser is telling me I'm supposed to be sick and my Father God is going to look at my blood covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ and he's going to say, well, he's crazy because by his stripes, the Lord Jesus' stripes, you are healed. Hallelujah. You have a legal right to healing. But here's the bottom line, number four. We receive according 
to our belief. We receive according to our belief. As you have believed, so let it be done unto you. That's what Jesus said to the centurion regarding his sick servant. Jesus said, as you believed it, you believed it. You have tremendous faith. As you have believed it, let it be done unto you. How you believe is how you receive. In Mark 9 and 23, one of the most outstanding, magnificent, glorious, wondrous verses. They're all good, but this is really good. Verses of Scripture. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Will you please memorize that Scripture? If you can believe, say, I'm a believer. Aren't we called believers? Aren't Christians called believers? Well, what do we believe? Isn't that a question sometimes? What do we believe? If you can believe, how many things are possible? All things? All things? How about your healing? Is that possible? How about peace that passes understanding? Is that possible? How about the joy of the Lord? Is that possible? How about prosperity? Is that possible? How about victory in the battle? Is that possible? How about being an overcomer? How about being more than a conqueror? How about walking on water? How about giving the devil fits? How about raising the dead? How about walking in victory in every area of your life? Is it possible? Is it possible? Is it possible? Yes, if you can believe all things are possible. Possible to him who believes. Hallelujah. All things, all things, all things are possible to him who believes. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Believe that you receive it and you will have it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm closing on this passage. When they came to hear Jesus in Luke chapter 5, we report went out concerning him, verse 15. Great multitudes came to hear him. And they came together to hear. And to be healed of him, of their infirmities. They came with expectation. And what they heard was kingdom. That they could be healed. And they believed it. They heard it. They believed it. And they received it. And he healed them all. And it says in verse 17, And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. Let me hear you say it. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Let me hear you. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. Everybody together. The power of the Lord was present to heal. Yes, you are, Lord. You're present today. You're present to heal us. Come on, start. Just let your faith go now. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. The power of God is present to heal. The power of God is present to heal. The power of God is present to heal them. Thank you, Lord. We've heard your word. We believe your word. We receive your word. And the power of God is present in this tabernacle to heal our bodies. To heal broken hearts. To mend us back together again. Oh, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. When I count to three, I'm going to ask you to stand. And if you want healing in your body, if you want health and healing all the days of your life, I want you to step out into these aisles. And they're going to usher you right down here. And Debbie and I are going to pray for you. Ministers, elders, pastors, come up on the stage with me. We're going to believe God together with you. And and in multiple scriptures, it says they wanted to touch him. 
The multitudes wanted to touch him. The woman with the issue wanted to touch him. And the crowds pressed around him to touch him. Well, if any two on earth agree is touching anything that they should ask, it shall be done for them of our Father. We touch the Lord by the prayer of agreement. By the prayer of agreement. We also use prayer claws. Uh, if, if you are praying for somebody, you want to take a prayer cloth to somebody that you're agreeing in prayer w regarding them. We have prayer cloths as well that will anoint with oil. Glory to God. All right, come on, let's fill in here. Worship team, let's minister.